In the early hours of July 11, 1881, the HMS Inconstant navigated the Bass Strait along the southern coast of Australia. The ship had royalty amongst its crew in Prince George, the future King of England, and his brother Prince Albert. The princes were a year into their three-year voyage around the world. As the ship sailed through the southern Australian waters, Prince George emerged onto the deck at 4 a.m., greeted by a tranquil morning yet to be touched by the sun's rays. Suddenly, the stillness was shattered as a crewman stationed on the foretopmast cross tree shouted an alarm, sighting a ship off the port bow. Rushing to investigate, Prince George initially could only make out a peculiar red light, which gradually revealed itself as a large vessel. Despite the calmness of the sea, the mysterious ship sailed with its sails fully billowed. The quarterdeck midshipman, who was a young officer in training, was sent forward to the front of the ship to get a better view and report back to the ship's officers. But when the boy reached the front, the ship had vanished. Panic rippled through the crew, for they recognized this ship and the ominous significance of its sighting. Despite their apprehension, they resumed their duties, striving to normalize the situation as the sun breached the horizon. The day was continuing as normal, and George was beginning to think the entire thing was an early morning dream. Yet, normalcy was short-lived. At 10.45, the crew member who first spotted the phantom ship tragically fell from his post, crashing onto the deck below, instantly succumbing to his injuries. Fortunately, this crewman's death was the only tragedy to result from the sighting of the phantom ship, but many ships across the world's oceans have not been so lucky. The ship that the crew of the HMS Inconstant saw that morning was the Flying Dutchman. The phantom ship cursed to sail the seven seas for eternity. Its crew never allowed to set foot on dry land again. This is their story. Our story begins in the 15th century with the spice trade. The spice trade was a lucrative business, and it was controlled by the Byzantine Empire and the Italian city of Venice. All spice went through these middlemen along the spice road, that was until 1453, when the port city of Constantinople fell. Up until now, all spice trade from the southern Asian countries went through this port. But once it fell to the Ottomans, the Western European powers refused to pay the high taxes required by the now in-control non-Christian power. This sparked the Age of Exploration, as Western European nations searched for an alternative path to the Indian Ocean. One attempt at this was to head further west and reach the Indies from the other side of the world. This didn't quite go as planned, as there was a previously unknown continent in the way from completing this journey. A second attempt was to sail around the southern tip of Africa and then up into the Indian Ocean. This second path was the one that would turn out to be the most lucrative in the early 17th century, and also one full of danger. Along this path was a treacherous span of water at the southernmost tip of Africa. This area was called the Cape of Good Hope, and hope was all that would save a ship during one of the violent storms that frequented the area. Dangerous or not, a new path to control the spice trade was born, and it was a time when the trade was dominated by the Portuguese, who held a tight grip on the newly found trade routes. In the Netherlands, merchants and traders eyed the enormous profits to be made from spices like cloves, nutmeg, and pepper, which were highly prized commodities in Europe. However, with the Portuguese controlling the spice trade, the Dutch saw their opportunities stifled. Determined to break free from Portuguese dominance and establish their own foothold in the spice trade, the Dutch set sail for the East Indies, led by the Dutch East India Company, or VOC for short, who was a powerful trading organization established in 1602. Dutch ships embarked on perilous voyages across treacherous seas to reach the distant lands of the East Indies. Facing fierce competition and challenges such as storms, pirates, and hostile encounters with Portuguese and local rulers, the Dutch persevered. They established trading posts and fortified settlements in strategic locations, gradually expanding their influence and control over the spice-producing islands. One of the pivotal moments in the Dutch East Indies trade was the conquest of the Banda Islands, known as the Spice Islands, in the Moluccas. These islands were the world's only source of nutmeg and mace, and their capture by the Dutch in the early 17th century solidified their dominance in the spice trade. With their superior naval power and strategic control over key spice-producing regions, the Dutch East Indies trade flourished. The Dutch East India Company amassed vast fortunes, 
becoming one of the wealthiest and most powerful trading enterprises of its time. However, the Dutch East Indies trade was not without its controversies and conflicts. The ruthless exploitation of local populations, forced labor practices, and monopolistic trade policies led to resentment and uprisings among the indigenous peoples of the East Indies. Despite these challenges, the Dutch East Indies trade continued to thrive for centuries, shaping the course of history and leaving a lasting legacy that is still felt in the region today. It was a saga of ambition, adventure, and exploitation that forever altered the global trade landscape. As part of their ambition, Dutch captains continued to push their ships and technologies to the limit, trying to reach their destination with ever more speed and capacity. One of these ambitious captains was Hendrik van der Decken, who regularly shuttled trade goods from the East Indies and back to Amsterdam. In 1641, Hendrik and his crew set out from Amsterdam, heading south down the coast of Africa. Their journey around Africa, into the Indian Ocean and to the East Indies, was routine and uneventful. They loaded their cargo for the return journey, and Hendrik was anxious to push the crew and ship to reach Amsterdam in record time. They set out, making their way back toward the African coast, but as they drew nearer, they could all sense a strong storm brewing. The entire crew, knowing the reputation of the Cape Storms, advised the captain to head toward the eastern African coast to anchor and wait out the storm. Hendrik found this unacceptable. He was determined to push on toward Amsterdam at record pace. As he pushed the ship into the storm, the winds began to pick up violently, and everyone was realizing the scale of Hendrik's mistake. At this point, the crew believed they had little time to attempt a retreat, so they began a mutiny to take control of the ship from Hendrik. The captain was having none of this, so he quickly killed the mutiny leader and tossed his body overboard into the stormy waters. Everyone now knew their fate was sealed and the captain pushed the ship further into the storm, cursing the sea gods that he will never turn back and keep sailing until doomsday. The ship and its entire crew were lost in the storm that day and never seen again amongst the living. The legend now says that Hendrik was granted his wish and he and his crew now sail the oceans forever. Hendrik and his crew are the most popular source behind the Flying Dutchman sightings to this day, but there is another captain and ship that not only could be the true origin, but could even be a second Dutchman roaming the world's oceans. Bernard Foka was a prominent Dutch captain in the late 17th century. Foka was best known for his ability to travel between Java in the Dutch East Indies and Amsterdam with great speed. In 1678, he managed to sail his ship, the Libra Nose, from Java to Amsterdam in just three months and four days. This was half the time that any other ship had achieved this. Upon Falka's arrival in Amsterdam, many people began speculating on how a trip of this distance could ever be accomplished with such speed. The first theory, about faking the distance traveled, was dismissed based on Foka having dated letters from the city of Java that he delivered to the Dutch king as proof. The second and most widely accepted theory was based on an old 17th century adage that if something is too good to be true, it must be the devil. The majority of people in 1678 assumed that Foka made a deal with the devil that gave him the ability to sail in any weather with his sails in full. The theory about the sails on the Libera Nose were 100% correct. In the 17th century, ships were not able to travel with their sails fully open if the winds were too strong. This would result in damage to the mast and weaken the ship. Foka was able to overcome this by installing iron yards on the Libera Nose. Yards are the cross braces that attach to the mast in which the sail hangs from. The iron that Foka used was much stronger than the traditional wood yards used on most ships of that time. The stronger yards allowed Foka to keep his sails open in full during any weather condition, and in turn travel as fast as the winds would take him. This unprecedented speed would be both a blessing in his record-breaking travel time, and eventually result in his curse. In 1680, during a return trip from the Dutch East Indies, the Libra Nose was traveling around the Cape of Good Hope when a strong storm rolled in, catching the ship and crew by surprise. Foka, overconfident about his ship's abilities, kept his sails open in full to gain more speed, in an attempt to break his own record. Unfortunately, his aggression caught up with him, and the Libera Nose would be lost at sea forever. Many at the time believed that Foka's deal with the devil finally came due, and he and his crew were doomed to sail in his service for eternity. Whether the Flying Dutchman is the phantom ship of Hendrik van der Decken, Bernard Foka, or even both, the sightings of the most legendary ghost ship continued long after the 17th century. 
The first literary documentation of the Dutchman was in 1790, when John MacDonald wrote about the crew of a ship witnessing the Flying Dutchman. He emphasized about it being seen whenever a strong storm would roll into the waters south of Africa. Again, in 1795, a book by George Barrington noted a story of a Dutch ship being lost off the coast of the Cape of Good Hope, and that any sight of this ship is a bad omen, bringing with it a curse of impending doom. In 1803, John Layden expanded upon the tale, detailing how sailors often recounted sightings of the Dutchmen beckoning hurricanes to the Cape area. According to Layden, the crew of the Dutchmen bore the burden of a curse, condemned to sail the seas until their penance was fulfilled for some grievous transgression. Over time, these narratives evolved, inspiring the creation of poems and further embellishments referencing the infamous ship. Beyond stories, there were detailed ship logs that mentioned actual sightings of the phantom ship. The most famous of these being the journal of Prince George aboard the HMS Inconstant in 1881. There was another sighting recorded in 1881, aboard a Swedish merchant ship captained by a man called Captain Larsen. Captain Larsen's ship had been battling a storm as she rounded the Cape on her journey from Australia. Shortly before dawn, an eerie glow appeared in the sky. The captain sent a man up the mast to see its cause. The lookout fell from his perch and crashed headlong onto the deck. He died several minutes later, having whispered the words, Flying Dutchman. Contrary to Prince George's sighting, this ship's misfortunes would continue. Another seaman went up the mast. The man, an Englishman called Landersbury, described a brilliant red flame in the middle of which there was an ancient vessel. He could clearly see its mast, spars, and sails. He said that it was undoubtedly the Flying Dutchman. Two days before Captain Larson's ship arrived at Rotterdam, Landersbury died of a heart attack. Another man, who had seen the manifestation through a porthole, was later discovered dead in his bunk and was said to have died of extreme fear. There was yet another sighting in 1884 when the American tea clipper Relentless, sailing for New York, sighted the Flying Dutchman 300 miles south of the Cape of Good Hope. The captain, Daniel Sheever, ordered the ship to alter course so that he could get a better look, but the helmsman died when they were 400 yards away from the Phantom ship. That same night, a fierce gale hit the Relentless, and three seamen were washed overboard never to be seen again. In January 1911, the Scottish whaling steamer Orkney Bell encountered the Flying Dutchman. The second mate described her giant sails swelling in a non-existent breeze. The Orkney Bell was so close to the Flying Dutchman that at one time it was thought that the two vessels were going to collide. They just missed, but as the Flying Dutchman sailed by, Several of the Orkney Bell's crew clearly saw her name on the stern. Three bells were heard from the phantom vessel. She heeled to starboard and vanished into the mist. Tragedy would eventually catch up with the Bell in 1914, when the Orkney Bell was one of the first British ships to be sunk in action by the German Navy on the outbreak of naval war. In March 1939, the phantom ship made an appearance to people on land. No less than 60 people at False Bay, in South Africa, had a complete view of the Flying Dutchman as she appeared to sail straight for the sands of Strandfontein. However, before it could hit the beach, the ship vanished into thin air as mysteriously as it had appeared. In September 1942, another sighting of the ship from land occurred. Four people sitting on their balcony at Moyle Point in Cape Town saw the phantom vessel sail into Table Bay and disappear behind Robben Island. On a spring morning in 1943, one of the most mysterious Dutchman sightings occurred. The Australian naval escort boat, HMAS Beresford, sailing westwards towards the Cape of Good Hope, broke radio silence to broadcast a two-worded message, Flying Dutchman. This was followed by complete radio silence. That silence would never be broken, and neither the boat nor its crew of 34 men were ever seen again. The last known sighting of the Dutchman occurred in October of 1959. The Dutch freighter, Strat Magelhan, captained by Captain P. Algra, encountered the phantom ship. The ghostly vessel's sails were fully spread, and a man could be seen clearly at the wheel. So sudden was the appearance of the ghostly ship that there was no chance of Captain Algra to take evasive action. However, just as the two vessels were about to collide, the Flying Dutchman vanished into the darkness. This leads us to today where there has not been a single recorded sighting of the Dutchman since that October day in 1959. Why hasn't there been another sighting? Where has the Dutchman gone? 
the answer to these questions could be as mysterious as the phantom ship itself. Whether you believe in the curse of a 17th century trading ship or not, the sightings of the Dutchman and the doom that it invokes are very real to the sailors who encountered it. The ship's legendary incorporation into popular culture has continued today. The ship has been the subject of a popular pirate movie created by the House of Mouse. Even if it was used in name alone, its legend lives on. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Haunted Origins. We have a special request for you today. If there is a haunted place that you would like us to explore, please see the email link in the description below, and we will do our best to add it to our episode list. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our latest episode.